So you guys know I don't like to talk about politics too much on this channel. It's about following Jesus daily. That is our mission. That is our focus. But this bill was too important for me to not talk about. It has direct relevance to those living in Canada. And I think it's important that people across the world know what's going on because it has direct implications on Christians and our worldview. I don't see this as anything other than a direct attack on the biblical worldview. So what's going on? Well, recently, and you might have heard about this, there was a bill to ban conversion therapy. And we're all, we all look at this and say, oh, okay, that sounds okay. Because usually when we think of conversion therapy, we think of really just basically abuse done towards um, LGBTQ people, ident people that identify in that group. You know, we hear stories and movies are made about the abuse that happens in those conversion therapy camps or, or treatments. So we're all like, yeah, don't do that abusive stuff. That's wrong. But if you take a closer look, it is so ambiguous that it actually has implications further than that onto just the everyday Christian, the everyday pastor, the everyday counselor. And we got to be alert about this. So basically what it's saying here, and you can take a look at the bill yourself. It's not very long. They define conversion therapy as a practice, a treatment or service designed to change a person's sexual orientation to heterosexual, change a person's gender identity to cisgender, change a person's gender expression to that which conforms to the sex assigned to them at birth and so on. In the preamble, it says, whereas conversion therapy causes harm to society, because among other things, it is based on and propagates myths and stereotypes about sexual expression, gender identity, and gender expression, including the myth that heterosexual cisgender gender identity and gender expression that conforms to sex assigned to a person at birth are to be preferred over other sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions. They are going directly diametrically opposed to God's design, the Christian worldview, because God does say, yes, there are better gender expressions and, and orientations that I have designed you in. And, and look, I'm not neglecting the fact that, that there are people that experience kind of gender confusion and same-sex attraction, and that totally happens. How we deal with that within the Christian worldview is understanding that we all have a sinful nature that simply because it feels more natural doesn't mean that it's good. We need to go back to a, an objective standard of right and wrong, understanding God's design and how he created us. His order for things. So basically this law that is just passed with conservative, liberal, NDP, all of our parties here in, in just roaring approval, which should tell you something about your parties if you support any of those parties, by the way. It, basically it's saying that if you aid in practice or treatment or um, there's another word here or a service of conversion therapy and that you've heard what they defined it as not as kind of this abusive thing that we'd all understand no that's wrong but even somebody that says I don't like these feelings that I'm having and I want to talk to somebody about it to, to help me work through it or I, I'm having confusion about my gender. I want to talk to somebody about how I can kind of recognize how I was born and step into that. That is basically liable up to five years in jail. I don't know if that's the correct terminology. I'm not a legal guy. Uh, basically, you could be put in jail for, for five years, up to five years, which is wild, right? Basically, this, this law is so broad that you, you know, you don't know exactly how it's going to be applied. This idea that somebody that wants to encounter this, this help, this treatment from, you know, a pastor, a counselor, whoever, now that's illegal even though they're a consenting adult. Like we're not talking about the abuse stuff that everybody is like, yeah, of course that should not be allowed. We're just talking about somebody that wants to talk to somebody else about their gender identity and their gender expression and, and how that can align with how God created them. But look, they made a clarification. They, they said that you can talk about these things as long as you're aiding them in their transition. <laughs> like you can aid them in their confusion, but you can't help them reconcile how they were created. I think this moment is a gut check for each of us, whether you live in Canada or not. Um, you know, for me, it's been taking a step back and understanding, look, I put out a lot of content about, you know, 
what it means to step into your God-designed role in your specific gender and gender confusion and LGBT issues. You know, I don't know how they're going to apply all this stuff. But at the same time, and I'm not acting the victim here, I'm just saying for each of us, we, we need to know where our foundation is. Are we really willing to stand on the objective truth of God or will we cower in the face of fear and of, of confusion? And the world really they support confusion. They celebrate confusion. But what we need to be pointing people to is the objective standard of God because his ways are so much better. I think it's important to realize that we can love people that are encountering these different struggles, obviously, but that doesn't mean we approve of every behavior. There needs to be nuance there. We can hold on to the biblical worldview, the objective truth that, that is right in front of us, and we can also love people and, and, and invite them into our house is and be present with them. That's part of our calling as well. The world's morality is ever changing. They have no objective standard to stand on. So it's continually evolving. My encouragement to you guys, whether you live in Canada or not, is know where your foundation is at. Understand that the hills that you're willing to die on, because as these laws come forward, you got to know when to make a stand, when to take a stand. I mean, if they're not letting you have a conversation with somebody about their gender identity or sexual or orientation and how they can understand it from a biblical perspective. That's something that's illegal now. Am I willing to step out and do it anyway? Like I'm telling you, and, and I'm kind of forced in that same position. As I said, this law is so ambiguous. It's like, well, can they prosecute me if I'm, you know, trying to help you guys through your own, you know, understanding of gender and sexuality and LGBT issues? Will that be considered talk therapy? I don't know, right? Like this law is so broad, but at the same time, we need to know where to take a stand, when to take a stand. And I think when they're telling us we can't do what the Bible has commanded us to do, I think that's the breaking point. I really do. Thank you so much for watching this video. This was a change of pace, I know. And so, you know, if you're not a big fan of the political type content, it's not a regular occurrence, but I felt really the need to, to speak up on this um, because I, I do think it's a direct attack on the biblical worldview. And for us Christians, I think it's time that we, you know, start focusing on building within our families, within our communities on a strong foundation, the foundation of the word of God, not just ever-changing opinions. I mean, that's how you make progress. The whole parliament basically said yes to this. So the, obviously we're on very two very different planes of thinking, but how do we make change? How do we make Christ-like change in our churches, communities, and governments? While well, we begin at ground level with ourselves, making sure we're right with God, our families, making sure our families are right with God and living out um, our role in society. And from there, our our churches and our communities and then from our government as well it's a building process this doesn't happen in a day but if we're continually focused on the objective truth of God and his design and how he's laid things out for us so beautifully then we're gonna make progress then we're gonna build something that will actually last thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it I encourage you to give it a like and subscribe below because I'm putting out new videos all the time the only reason that I can do that is because of the wonderful people on patreon it has been such a blessing to get to know you guys on there on a more personal level with our monthly live streams and other things going on so it's so fun um, if you want to help support what I'm doing and helping people follow Jesus daily you can head to the link in my description and partner with me on patreon Thank you again, guys, and I will see you next time. God bless.